trials to triumph, where we embrace hope even in trials, changing lives, one struggle at a time. Today I'd like to share with you one of the most profound, meaningful, and yet difficult times of my life. It was also a time in which I could watch the hand of God intricately working in my life right before my eyes. I had been dealing with severe pain in one leg followed by both legs and difficulty walking for several months. I had been to numerous doctors and had many different tests done to find out what was causing this difficulty. What was finally discovered was that I had two tumors embedded in my spinal cord. A very risky issue and dealing with the medications that I was on and my own personal medical history made any treatment extremely risky. Every surgeon I went to turned me away for that reason, and so we left very frustrated and alone, not knowing what my future held. Several months later, I was sent to a world-renowned pediatric surgeon who dealt with many different types of issues of the spinal cord. So we went to that appointment with a little bit of hope, thinking he might have an idea that would work just for my case. But yet again, we walked away disappointed, frustrated, and very alone, for he too said it was much too risky to do the surgery for fear that I would leave paralyzed. So for the next several weeks, we had lots of conversation. We prayed harder than we'd ever prayed. And we decided to ask that pediatric surgeon one more time if he was willing to do the surgery. The reason being, eventually, I would become paralyzed by those two tumors. The risk that was the same, perhaps, by doing the surgery. He agreed. What took place to follow is the part of the story I want you to focus the most on. Three days before the surgery, I had a divine intervention in which a piece of scripture came to my mind. It's the story from Mark chapter 2 in which Jesus is teaching to a crowd of people inside this house. And he's teaching people about is it easier to heal someone or is it easier to forgive someone? Outside of that house lied a man who was a paralytic, paralyzed. And in his disease, he wanted so desperately to be inside so that he could hear Jesus' teaching. For he knew that if he was able to hear Jesus teach, he would also be healed. But because of the crowd being so large, there wasn't room for him. And because that he could not walk, he could not get in to hear Jesus speak. So what took place was his friends and family and those that had gathered outside of that house lifted him up to the roof, opened the roof up, and lowered him down to the feet of Jesus. Can you imagine? Listening to someone talk and then looking up to the ceiling as someone comes in being lowered down before your eyes. Jesus stopped his teaching for a moment and said to the man, why are you here? And the man said just why he had come. I knew if I could hear you, I would be healed. And just like other places in scripture, Jesus says to him, Your faith has made you well. Stand up, take your mat, and go. When I heard and thought of this scripture, I went right back and reread it several times. And in my reading, I had to ponder for myself what this story meant for me today. What did this story mean for me at this point in my life? And as I pondered, what I learned was this, that even though I was very afraid, 
And even though I did not know how I would awake from surgery, and even though I didn't know what my life would be like after, I knew that if I too was able to hear the word of Jesus, I'd be healed. And what I also discovered was that between my family and my friends and people all across this world who were praying for me, they were lifting me up. They were raising me up as if like that paralytic man, raising the roof, lowering me down to the feet of Jesus, so that when I arrived at that day of surgery, I knew I was not alone. So we turn to waking up from that risky surgery. And as I was wheeled into the elevator on the gurney, I looked toward the feet of my gurney and saw my mother, my father, and my husband as I wiggled my toes. That day for me brought a miracle in which not only the surgery was successful, but I knew I was not alone. But yet there was a greater miracle that I was not even aware of at that moment. So when I was more conscious and awake from the anesthesia, my family let me know what the true miracle had taken place during surgery. You see, I had had CT scans, MRIs, x-rays, myelograms, you name the test, they did it to find out where these tumors were so they knew exactly what to do at surgery. And remember, I saw all of those different doctors, all of that knowledge together. And when this world-renowned surgeon began the surgery, he discovered that all of that knowledge and all of those tests were wrong. What he found was a simple cyst self-contained around my spinal cord. This surgery now became too simple for him to perform, and he needed to call in another surgeon. Two days later, that surgeon came to my bedside. He was very hesitant to speak with us, for he had no explanation for what had taken place. In all of the medical knowledge that he had and all of the tests that he could look at, there was no explanation for what took place. But yet we knew it was the hand of God in the midst of our lives. We each have difficulty in which we have to deal with in our life. Whether your home has been burned to the ground in a fire, whether you've lost a job, whether your spouse of 50 years has died, whatever the difficulty might be, I invite you to open your eyes and see what it is that God is trying to show you and open your ears to what he is trying to tell you. For in doing so, you might be lifted up to see things you never thought possible. Thanks for joining me today. I invite you to leave comments below. And when you're in need of additional thoughts, stories, or words of encouragement, join me at my Facebook page, where we truly focus on embracing hope in the midst of our difficulties. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.